Hi everybody, welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, we are going to cover a nervous system past exam question. This particular one is an easier question, so the majority of these answers are going to be one word answers. It comes from section A or question one in an exam, and even though the answers are pretty straightforward, they make it more difficult because it's very wordy, the question. So we need to unpack them very carefully so that we don't get caught up on any of the vocabulary. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on because I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Also, if you're in matric and you're thinking about improving your marks and you need that extra little bit of help, you should consider joining my membership where you get access to my own personal summary notes. Uh, we have live lessons together as well as having extra walkthrough exam questions like this and many, many more perks. So as I said, this is a pretty straightforward question. See, the questions seem to be quite long. And the reason for that is they are trying to overload you with information and see if you can filter through it to see what is worthwhile and what is not. So the diagram below shows the regions A, B, and E of the nervous system that can be blocked by local anesthetic, which is a drug that produces a complete or partial loss of feeling for various medical procedures. And they've given you a schematic drawing, which is a fancy way of saying that the drawing doesn't look like the structures. It's just like circles and lines and squares. And what we have here is the brain at the top, followed by the spinal cord. We have what we're not so sure right now is, but I'm pretty sure we can guess that this is a, a neuron or a nerve. We have the thumb, and then we have some labels saying the impulse is going uh, back to the brain and the impulse is going to the thumb. The various letters, however, indicate the block is at A, the block is at B, the block is at E, or there is no block. And I'm pretty sure you can maybe figure this out, but essentially what they're going to ask us here is if we were to block off these particular regions of our um, nervous system, what would be the impact? Would you feel it? Won't you feel it? That kind of thing. So let's actually have a look at the questions and see if that's true. For 1.4.1, write down the correct letter for each statement using the key given in the diagram. So they've given us the key over here. The first question says, when the skin of the thumb is stimulated, the thumb and the hand move involuntary, but the patient cannot move the hand voluntary or feel it to move it. So if we break that down, they are saying that the, the thumb is stimulated, the thumb and the hand move involuntarily, but the patient cannot move the hand voluntarily or feel it move. So what does that mean? That means that the person is pulling away in a reflex, right? Because they can move involuntarily away from the stimulus but it says the patient can't move the hand voluntarily. Now, the only way that we know how to do things voluntarily is with the brain. Involuntarily, when we're reflexing away from something, is going to be the spinal cord. Now, where is the block on our nervous system in order to still be able to move involuntarily, but not actually um, process it or feel it voluntarily? would mean we'd need to cut or we'd have to have a block of anesthetic here at A. Because basically what that means is the impulse can go from the thumb, it can go down this neuron, it can go to the spinal cord and we can experience the pain. We don't actually physically feel it, but we move away from it. And the reason why we don't feel it is because if we put the block at A, the brain can't perceive the pain. Now, if we move on to the next one, it says the patient can feel the thumb being touched or pinched but cannot move the thumb. So that means they have a sense, but they don't have a motor function. And if we look at our diagram here, and it's really important to look at our um, incoming and outgoing flow of impulses, we can see that the ingoing impulse, in other words, the one going towards the thumb, this one over here, that is our motor. The one going out of is the sensory. So if we were to cut this in a location in order for us to be able to feel the thumb being touched, we would then say that, um, and we can't move the thumb, we would say that the um, particular block is at E. Why at E? Because the thumb feels the sensation, it goes down to the spinal cord, there's no blockage on that side, up 
to the brain and we feel it. However, the sensation to move it is unable to do so because you can see here the block at E uh, forces the impulse to be stuck there and it can't make its way back to the thumb. Now, the next question is sort of in the inverse because the next question says the patient can move their thumb, but they cannot feel the movement. So in other words, they have motor function, but what they don't have is any sensation. So that incision or that blockage is going to be over here at B because that is the sensation nerve. It's the sensory neuron. It's impulse going from the thumb to the central nervous system. So they can't feel it. However, they can move it, which means that the information coming from the brain can move along this impulse at the bottom here and go back to the thumb and move it. So the blockage is going to be at B. Then our final one for this is when the skin of the thumb is stimulated, the thumb is going to move and the patient knows it's moving. Now, I quite like this um, particular question because what it means is, is that you are thinking about moving it, which means it's a voluntary thing. And uh, this one's going to be F because there's no blockage. Well, why no blockage? Because if you can feel your thumb being touched, if you can move your thumb, and also you know that it's moving, in other words, you're aware of it and it's not just a reflex, there isn't going to be any blockage. So do you see what I mean by these questions? They're actually quite easy, but there's a lot of like reading and unpacking, so you've got to be very, very careful. So let's move into the next question. Um, number two says, which labeled part of the central nervous system will be actively involved in generating a quick response in a normal, healthy person when a thumb, is, when the thumb is accidentally touches a hot surface? And that is going to be the spinal cord. Remember, that is the part that does all your reflexes. Then it says for number three, name the type of reaction mentioned in question 1.4.2. It is a reflex arc because that's remember the arc between the sensation and the stimulus and your spinal cord. And then if you haven't uh, learned that just yet, or you can't remember it, you should click the card above now where I explain reflexes in more detail for you. For question four, it says, which two parts shown in the diagram are protected by meninges? So this is some knowledge for you, and that's going to be the brain and spinal cord. Again, if you're not so much aware of all of your nervous system structures, you should click the card above now where I go through the structures um, of the nervous system. And then number five says, identify the letter representing the peripheral nerve that is composed of and then sensory and motor. The funny thing is, is that if you didn't know these two answers way in the beginning, you wouldn't have been able to answer question number one. But just as a recap, so that we know which one is which, the sensory neuron is always going to be the neuron that is going from the receptor, which in this case is the thumb. So that means it is going to be um, letter C, this one over here. That is the sensory neuron because it's the impulse is coming from the receptor of the thumb or the nerves in the thumb in down towards the spinal cord. And the motor is going to be D because that is carrying an impulse away from the central nervous system towards the effector, which would be the muscles in the thumb. Now, here is the memo for those questions. And as you can see, when you look at the memo, it just seems so silly that all of these are just one word answers. But as I mentioned to you in the beginning, you've got to read very carefully, unpack them and go slowly because all of these marks are very quick, very easy, and you should be focusing on getting full marks for your multiple choice, give the term, that kind of thing, and questions like this, which you, which you should always expect in a final exam. Now, if you have liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and I will see you all again soon. Bye.